idea. I know it's been a little bit, but I'm back. So hear me out. A young woman has spent basically her entire life in the mental hospital. But while she's in the hospital, she gets pregnant and has a baby boy. Soon after his birth, she begins to act normal and stable, so she gets released to raise him. But by the boy's 18th birthday, his mother is very ill. So he went to go visit her, maybe for the last time. But before he left, her last words to him were, I'm not as crazy as everyone says I am. Trace my steps and come and find me. What? The next day, she died. He wasn't there for the death, and she wanted a closed casket funeral. But her words kept playing in his mind. Come and find me. So he kind of sort of did something really illegal. He dug up her grave. Inside, he found nothing but her mental hospital bracelet from years ago. So he does what she says. He checks himself into the mental hospital and begins to trace her steps. Is his mother alive? Is this some sort of sick game she's playing? Are there more clues within the hospital walls? Or did the pain of her death cause him to lose it? I think it would have been a little bit better if she gave him some hints or had him solve a mystery that would have been more entertaining to watch. I would definitely watch that. I have a movie idea. I'm back. Just hear me out. So there's this guy and his life has sucked. I mean, this guy has been put through the ringer. His parents died at a young age, got into drugs, he fell in the wrong crowd of people. And now he's 25 years old and he's still with the wrong crowd of people. It'd be that way. And he's known as the guy that does all the hard, tough jobs. Illegal ones. <laughs> so his boss comes to him one day and says that he has been requested to do a very specific job. His boss tells him he doesn't know what the job is yet, he just knows that they're offering millions of dollars. And then if he accepts the job, the person who hired him will be sending him the information. Anonymously. So he hears a million dollars and he's like, I I'll take it, I'll take the job. He needs this money. I need it too, but whatever. Anyway, he accepts the job, and a few weeks later, a package shows up on his doorstep. He opens up the package, and inside is what he needs to do. Whoever hired him needs him to kidnap somebody. I mean, he's never done that before, but it seems pretty simple, right? Wrong! <laughs> the person he has to kidnap is the president's daughter. Now he's freaking out. He's accepted the job. He can't back out. Backing out of something like this means one thing. He'll be, you know, killed if you didn't understand the like, but anyway. So he has to do three things. Grab the girl, take her to the address that was given to him deep within the mountains, and then hand her over to whoever requested the job. It's game time. It's the day of the kidnapping. He's been watching her for weeks. He knows her every move. Is when she's leaving school with her friends. He takes her, throws a bag over her head, ties her hands in ropes. She's crying. She's freaking out. He drives for a few hours and they reach the location. It's some random house in the mountains. At this point, she's still crying. He gets out of the car and looks around, but nobody's there. So he thinks, maybe they're in the house. He grabs her, takes her up to the stairs, and knocks on the door. No answer. Somehow she gets the bag off of her head, and all of a sudden, she stops crying. I mean, she turns completely calm. Way too calm. As her hands are tied up, she reaches out and punches in a code on the door keypad. The door unlocks. He follows her into the house. She turns to him and she says, take these ropes off my hands. He says, no, somebody's coming to get you. She looks at him and she goes, nobody's coming. And he, he looks at her, he's like, what do you mean nobody's coming? Someone better be coming. I have the president's daughter. I will go to jail for life. She grabs him, looks him in the eyes and says, don't ask questions and don't reach out to anyone. It's time for me to disappear. I am going to fake my death and you are going to help me. Did she set this all up? Was she the anonymous person? Why does she need to disappear? Will they succeed in faking her death? And why did she choose him? I'm really glad she added that plot because it made it really, really so much more interesting than it was before. I have a movie idea. Hear me out. So there's this 17 year old girl who sneaks out of her house every night to just drive. She's not going anywhere specific. She just does it as a stress relief. Well, one day she leaves at her normal time in the middle of the night. She drives for a few hours and then starts heading back. She goes up to her window to try to sneak back in, but it's locked. Oh, uh, that's weird because she didn't lock it. Risking getting caught, she goes to the front door and unlocks it and goes inside that way. Half asleep, stumbling into her room, she freezes. Her room is different. Squinting in the dark, she sees something. Someone is in her bed. Trying to stay quiet so she doesn't wake up the intruder in her bed, she rushes to her parents' room. She starts knocking on her parents' door. They open the door and she immediately starts telling them, Mom, Dad, someone's in my room, someone's in my bed. For a second, they just look at her. And 
then their entire demeanor changes. They start yelling at her, who are you? How did you get in our house? Confused and scared, she's like, mom, dad, it's me, it's Abigail. They say that they have no idea who she is and if she doesn't get out, they're calling the police. Scared and confused, she runs out of the house and gets to her car. On the verge of tears, she pulls into the police station and runs in. Running up to the policeman, she says, please, I need help. There's an intruder in my house and I think that they're forcing my parents to act really strange. The policeman stops her and he says, miss, miss, I'm gonna need you to calm down and just tell me your name. She says her name is Abigail Reese and she gives him her parents' address. But then the police officer goes from looking worried to annoyed. He said, miss, I don't know which one of your friends put you up to this or dared you to do this, but we're not putting up with these pranks anymore. She stops him and she's like, well, what do you mean? This isn't a prank. He looks at her and says, Kid, there is no such thing as an Abigail Reese. And he tells her to get out. Walking out, she's crying and she grabs her phone and looks up her social media. Everything is gone. Any trace of her life on the internet is gone. In tears, she looks up from her phone and sees some random guy leaning against her car. He stares at her for a second and then says, They didn't believe me either. Huh? Seeing her confusion, he starts talking again. He says to her, I woke up this morning to everyone not knowing who I am. Apparently, I don't exist. I heard you in there while I was walking out. They told me the same thing, but now I know I'm not crazy. Now, are you gonna stand there and stare at me? Or are you gonna help me figure out why the hell we don't exist? How did this happen? Is this some extremely realistic hallucination? Who is this guy? Why has the world erased their lives? And are there others? This could honestly be a TV show. This is really brilliant, but I'm also wondering who was on her bed. Like, that's kind of weird.